you're watching this video, then let me be the first to say congratulations! It's been a long time coming, but we finally made it to exactly now. So while you pat yourself on the back for seemingly no reason, allow me to explain why we're celebrating. You may not realize it, but it took billions of years to get you to this point, in order for you to become, well, you. A collection of atoms long, long ago had to arrange themselves in just the right way to create a form of life that was just successful enough to produce an offspring. And that offspring was successful enough to produce its heir, and so on and so forth through the countless generations, until we get at last to you, the product of countless triumphs out there in nature. And it wasn't easy. Your body as a species has had to come up with some pretty wild ways to stay alive, to keep everything in your immensely complex set of systems running. Even some of the pretty trivial things that you do have some interesting reasons for existing. So without further ado, let's get into some bodily musings on this episode of Stuff You've Probably Wondered. Let's start off with a question I've wondered myself for years and only now had the sense to properly research. Why do we itch? It seems silly, but really think about it. What is it about this strange crawling sensation on your skin that makes you automatically scratch it? Well, as it turns out, the answer is far more complicated than anyone thought. Itching, scientifically known as pruritus, falls under the same category as pain and heat on your skin. A certain type of nerve cell called TRPV1 expressing neurons exists in your brain and is used specifically to help you receive this type of sensation. Seems simple, but in order to receive pain, your body usually has to detect that there is something wrong going on. Itching doesn't involve this, so there must be some other thing that makes itching happen. Actually, the culprit wasn't discovered until 2013. A specific molecule called NNPB, short for Neuropeptide Natriuretic Polypeptide B. But this molecule isn't found in the skin surface like you'd think. It's actually produced by the heart to control blood pressure. Why that has any correlation to itching is anyone's guess, but what we do know is that having the TRPV1 cells genetically removed so that NNPB can't be received causes itching to be completely ignored by the brain. This was tested on mice in a lab, and curiously, when the entire cell was taken out, only itching could not be sensed, but heat and pain remained. So despite our recent understanding of itching, we still don't fully get how it all works. So maybe itching is too clouded a mystery, but something that is less obscure is the idea of your stomach growling. Medically, stomach or bowel rumblings of any kind are known as borborygmus, which oddly enough has a similar origin to the word barbarian. They both come from ancient Greek, in which these words are onomatopoeia, or sound in word form. The only difference between borborygmus and barbarian is while one describes the sound your stomach makes, the other is the sound that all civilized languages sounded like to the Greeks. Bar, 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 bar. Anyway, what actually makes stomach rumblings occur is a process called peristalsis, which is really just a fancy term for the rapid contracting and relaxing of your stomach muscles, causing sound to be produced. Actually, this process happens in many things in the body. It moves food to the small intestine, causes gases in the large intestine to shift, and helps worms move in dirt, just to name a few. As for why your stomach does this when you're hungry, it's really just a way to remind your brain that you need food. Your stomach mimics the process of moving and churning food to get your attention, so in a way, every time you're hungry, your stomach mocks you into eating. Finally, the last question on our list of bodily related queries, why is blood red? Again, it seems like a stupid and trivial question, but think about it. In nature, red is a color of extreme warning and has many connections to love and passion on the flip side of things. So is it just a coincidence that blood is the color it is? Well, the answer is yes. The reason blood is red is actually the same reason the sky is blue. Hemoglobin is what makes up red blood cells, and the prime ingredient in this protein is iron. So when light comes through blood, all the colors in the rainbow can pass through it except for red, which is blocked by the atoms of iron, and so red bounces back. Similarly, the sky is blue because light passing through it just goes on by except for blue, which is blocked by particles in the air. However, not all animals have red blood. Many crustaceans, such as horseshoe crabs and lobsters, as well as spiders and octopi, have blue blood. This is because they have a different type of protein in their blood which contains copper, an element famous for turning certain compounds blue. This is found most notably in the corrosion and covering the Statue of Liberty, a monument plated entirely in copper. Red and blue colored blood is the most common colors in animals, but a type of lizard called the skink in Papua New Guinea has green blood due to the recycling of hemoglobin. Also, animals called lamp shells have purple blood, and strangest of all, the crocodile ice fish from the seas around Antarctica has blood that is completely transparent. Thanks for watching, and as always, if you have a question you'd like me to answer, or have an original composition you'd like me to use in the background of a future video, leave it in the comments or email me at stuff you've probably wondered at gmail.com. Also, in the comments, share your thoughts about the three topics I covered. Which are the most surprising? Are there any other bodily functions or phenomena you'd like me to talk about? Who knows, I might just make another bodily music video in the future. Either way, I'll see you next time on Stuff You've Probably Wondered.